He is a great jurist and constructive statesman and the most interesting man I have ever met. On December the 4th, 1902, the Senate confirmed my nomination of Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, a seat that had been occupied for 21 years prior by Justice Horace Gray, until declining health forced him to retire. <laughs> Justice Gray was one of the most valuable members of the court, and I felt that I would be guilty of an irreparable wrong to the nation if I did not put in his stead a man who was absolutely sane and sound on the policies of our public life. I believed that we should have a jurist who stood firmly on the principles of Alexander Hamilton and Justice John Marshall, a man who was equal parts justice and statesman, and I was convinced by my friend and colleague Henry Cabot Lodge that this was just such a man. And so I invited Holmes to join me at my house in Oyster Bay for dinner. And not only did he persuade me, but he also charmed my family. <laughs> I was detained from joining him because of fog in Long Island Sound. And so my family had to entertain Mr. Holmes until my arrival. <laughs> Imagine the surprise of my children when they came down for dinner to see this six-foot-three gentleman telling them that he was their dinner guest. <laughs> but Holmes had served in the Civil War, where he had been shot three times, and so he easily captured my children's attention with stories of the war. <laughs> oh, they were more than content to share the table with this man. <laughs> And just as importantly, he led me to believe that he would be in favour of the great principles which I so earnestly believed in. And there was very little concern with Holmes's nomination. The only true resistance came from Samuel Hoare, uh, a senator from Massachusetts, who seemed convinced that Gray's seat should be occupied by Hoare's own nephew. <laughs> Uh, but ultimately, I never knew a nomination to be so well received. Holmes was confirmed unanimously on the fourth day of December. And I dare say that Holmes held great promise to be everything I had hoped for. His early decisions seemed to lend credence to that. And then came the Northern Securities case. Uh, but let us hold that story for another time. At this moment, Holmes seemed to fill that hope that I had that the great principles and promises which built this country would be protected.